Hey there, Sunday afternoon, and I released the video, uh, finally, <laughs> I'm making these clamps uh, this morning, and um, I've got three here, the other one's being used to glue together another one of these things here. This is me working on the long uh, bar version of the same idea. I put these together yesterday afternoon, actually. This is actually, you know what this is? This is the fence rail from my old fence. I just cut it in half. This is actually Baltic birch plywood, two layers of half inch glued together. So I, you know, recycled that to make this clamp, which is just a prototype, basically. So I did two of them, and I glued up the other one, but I forgot to put glue on one of the side pieces. And um, I knew it right away because it wasn't squeezing out when I clamped it up. But I, uh, I took it apart this morning, took the side off, that is, and I uh, put glue on, I reclamped it up, and so I'll be ready to go tomorrow. Um, well, if, these are, if this is a prototype, why am I making two? Well, I mean, I got two of them, and I think that the uh, plywood here is not bad for strength. I mean, it's not the strongest. Uh, someone asked me and uh, left a comment asking if plywood would work uh, for the for these clamps and I really can't recommend it for these but I um, thought I would give it a try here. Anyway, so I also made this thing here which is basically the same as this except scaled up a little bit. It's got a, a wider wedge that goes in there. I haven't got the metal on the top yet but I'm going to do that. The tricky part that I'm trying to figure out with this, and you know, I, I've already come up with a solution for it, but it's not, I'm not really super happy with it, is that these are parallel clamps. Now the way parallel clamps is, is that this one stays parallel with this one, it, regardless of where the uh, material is clamped here. And the advantage of that is, is that you can put the stock so you're putting it, uh, you know, uh, clamping up a panel. You can put the stock right down tight against the bar, and it would be pushing from here, and it would still work, right? It'll apply the right amount of pressure. Now, um, the way this works is this, this part here is L-shaped, right? So it goes inside there. And, of course, I can't do the same with this one because the wedge is in the way. There is another way, and that's to go out around onto the side here. It doesn't look great, and I'm not happy with it, so I'm thinking about something else, and that's to angle the <laughs> angle the um, lead screw downwards at the same angle as this wedge here, so it's like 10 degrees, and then make the uh, pad at the front here a little bit heftier, you know, longer. So that as you're pushing forwards, because you really don't have to, you really don't have to crank these very far. There's a little bit of a hesitation there when they first tighten them up, that it tightens on the wedge, like it'll come back maybe an eighth of an inch before it starts to really tighten there. So it doesn't have to travel very far before it engages and it locks, right? So that's what I was thinking is that the block. Hang on now, I'll try to find something here that I can show what I'm talking about. The block is sitting down hard on the bar, okay? It's touching the bar to begin with when it's right back in here. So when you're pushing with the, with the lead screw, it's actually pushing it down as well. You understand what I mean? It's pushing it into the bar, so it's tightening that up. And that action alone, given the width of the block, should keep the jaws in, in parallel. That's what I'm thinking about. That's what I want to do with this one. That's what I want to try, okay? So that's why it's important that I get this put together and made. All right? I don't know why I'm doing this right now because it wasn't my intention to do this right now, but I, you know, it was a small, okay, I spent the last three days editing the video, writing the build article, the sales page put up, um, that's always a frantic, frantic uh, deal. And that's the reason why I waited an extra week to do this. Because, okay, if I let a project sit, 
it becomes more difficult to get back into it. That's the first thing. And then it's even more difficult again when it's something like that, that I have got a full plan set for. And especially for something that I don't think, <laughs> like I don't think that they're going to sell very well, right? Not that these sold poor, like it's still early in the day, basically. And um, like this is amazing clamp. Like if of all the clamps that I've made, other than this one right here, which is also amazing, this would be the one worth building. Because these, like when I compare this to this, this is my go-to clamps. These are the ones I use all the time. I'm thinking that this is just as easy to use, okay? And not to mention that it's lighter. This is bigger, this has a 10 inch capacity, and it's lighter than this one that only has what? Six, maybe seven? Hang on, let's measure. Six, six inch capacity. And this is substantially heavier than this one right here. Can it apply more force? Yes, it's made out of steel. Of course it can apply more force, but I've never pushed these to the limit where you know they come close to me saying i can't put any more force on there i'm gonna i'm gonna break the clamp and i anticipate that would be the same thing for something like this you know you're when you're gluing up parts or putting things together you typically don't need a huge amount of force like i glued up like i glued up i'm grabbing the wrong thing here hold on i, I got too many things happening I glued up this, all right, yesterday, and I glued it up with the um, polyurethane construction adhesive. And I'm going to put a picture on the screen here of how it all squeezed out with the clamp pressure that I was able to put on with this. I really torqued them down because I wasn't careful. Like, I didn't plane any of this wood. It's all basically cut very quickly also because I just wanted to get it done um, quickly on the table saw. So it's not, you know, the, the nice tight fit that I normally go for. I wanted to, you know, I, 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 that's why I used the glue that I use to fill in a gap that might be there. And I put the extra clamp pressure on to really, you know, squeeze it together. Anyway, so yeah, these can put on more than enough force for what you're gonna do, I think. So it's my thinking that I'm going to be using these from now on and I won't be using these as much. So I'm also looking at the possibility of making ones that are slightly smaller again. Okay, just a little bit smaller and using a 5 uh, 16 inch threaded rod instead of a 3 8 because that was one of the things I had with this. I didn't have any clean threaded rod and I wanted to get these done so I didn't go and buy any new stuff. So I used old ones. So there's one here that's really ugly right there and it's slightly bent so it doesn't work well. But I've got a full length of 5 16 threaded rod that I don't have a use for. So I'm probably going to make six or seven ones that are slightly smaller than this. And I may make plans for that as well. You know clamps were really hot a few years ago but since then even when you come out with something that's truly good and truly different like this thing here it doesn't get anybody's pee hot you know they don't get excited about that so i don't know by the way okay here's the thing when you clamp when you're tightening this up on your work and it and it uh, wedges down on the wedge like that and then you release it that's kind of stuck but the way to free that up is to pound it like that, okay? Or better yet, pound it on the bench a little bit. You can probably do that a million times and it will have no effect on this thing, okay? And that's what I like about it. It's so quick to get this thing set up and taken apart. The weak point is you're, you're tightening the clamp, right? It's pushing down on the end here. That's the reason why you get the wedge. It spreads that load right down onto the bar without making a big dent. The weak point is right here on the back side at this end right here. So um, the way this is glued together, it would take a lot of force to break that. But that is the weak point right there. 
And I mean, obviously, if you force the clamp to do something, you know, it's not supposed to be doing or push it a bit too hard and you did break it there, you could fix that. It's not a problem. Like these ones here, I've got a screw in the end here to stop them from sliding all the way out. But if it did break, you just slide it off, cut out the piece that you have in there, glue in a new one, clamp it up overnight, and it's ready to go the next day. All right, now some will probably be thinking, well, what about you put a dowel through there? Um, you know, would that make it stronger? I don't think so. I think the only uh, way to make this stronger with wood is to box join it to the sides and that would make it really strong but just adding a dowel here I think would actually make it weaker unless you glued it in with something like epoxy or um, if you use maybe a metal rod and glued that in with epoxy that may make it stronger there but the wood to wood connection here, you know, the wood glue that I use, that's stronger than the wood itself. So it would take a lot of force to break that. More force than you should be trying to apply with a clamp like this. Okay? GLH means great looking hair. Just spray GLH on and it instantly covers your bald spot, leaving you with great looking hair. GLH is not a paint or a cover up. It's an amazing powder that clings to the tiniest hairs on your head. It actually builds on itself, leaving you with great, great-looking hair. 